Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a DIY no sew clutch purse. Now, I always give credit where it's due, and I was inspired to make this by Lisa of Beauty Splurge, one of my favorite go to channels here on YouTube for all kinds of DIY stuff. So, I'll link her original video down below. I also went ahead and added a little bit of my own ideas, and I'm actually going to show you guys how to make a crossbody purse as well. So, I hope you like the video. For this DIY, you will need a cutting board. Cover fabric, I'm making three bags so I chose three fabrics and I made the mistake of ordering online so I didn't get to see and feel the fabric in person. Don't do that ladies because the blue one actually didn't work out too well with the heat of the iron so it's always best to buy fabric in person. Um, a fabric for the lining which is what I'm using the black one for, fabric scissors or a rotary cutter, something to mark your fabric with, heat and bond tape, double folded bias tape, magnetic snaps, heat and bond sheets, and these next steps are optional if you want to make a crossover bag, you'll need some chain, ribbon, and jump rings, which I forgot to show, and finally you'll need an iron and a ruler. I took my lining fabric and I measured and marked 13 inches across, and for the length I measured 9 inches, then another 9 inches, then 5 inches for the flap for a total of 23 inches in length. Using your scissors or rotary cutter to cut out the lining, and it should look something like this. Then just choose your cover fabric and cut it out using the same measurements you did for the lining. Next, turn your cover fabric front side facing down and cut some heat and bond paper to the length of your cover fabric and then just iron it on. Follow the instructions on the packaging, but it's about five seconds or so um, on each like little section until the heat and bond adheres to the fabric. Next, you're just going to peel back the white paper and there should be a shiny film left over on your fabric. Very important, wait for the paper to cool a few seconds after you ironed it. If you try to take it off when it's hot, it won't work correctly. I learned this the hard way, so trust me, please learn from my mistakes. Then line up your lining to the cover fabric and iron it on in the same way, spending a few seconds on each section. This is going to adhere your lining to the cover. The heat and bond paper also acts like a stiffener, giving your bag more shape and hold. Next, grab your bias tape, and I'm using black to match the bag. Cut two strips a bit longer than the width of your bag so that you have some extra on both sides. Also, grab your heat and bond tape. Open up your double folded bias tape and iron on two strips of heat and bond tape inside. Then, when it's cooled a bit, just peel off the tape. Then line up the bias tape along one end of the purse and fold it over. There should be some hanging off both ends. So iron that on and don't forget to flip it over and iron the front side as well. I'm using a towel to iron on top of because my mom will totally kill me if I mess up the tablecloth. Next, just repeat the same steps for the other end of the purse. Now, remember we left some hanging off the ends. Add some more heat and bond tape and fold the extra pieces in and iron them into place. This will give the bag a more professional finish and a nice clean edge look. Next, I'm adding my magnetic snap. I totally forgot to do this before I actually attached the lining to the cover, but it's okay, that's easily fixed. I'm going to grab some extra lining fabric, folding my bag closed the way it will be when it's done, and finding the middle of the flap, I'm adding some more heat and bond paper and also adding some to the extra lining fabric. Using a ruler, I'm going to find the center, place the washer piece of the magnetic snap, and use a pen to mark the hole and slots. I'm peeling off the heat and bond paper from the actual purse but leaving the one on the extra fabric. With the rotary cutter, I'm making two small cuts right on the lines. Push the magnetic snap through the cuts place the washer piece in place, and I like to use a scissor to help me push down the little legs, securing it in place. Line up the extra fabric over the heat and bond and iron it on to adhere it. Fold over your bag and mark the button tip of your magnetic snap with your fabric pencil. Then fold the flap over and press it down in place and you should be able to see the marking. That's going to be the center. Again, I'm using the washer to mark off the place where I will make my cuts. And before I cut the slots, I'm just going to add a patch of heat and bond tape on the inside of the purse just to reinforce the area a little bit more. And I'm not pulling off this piece either. 
Then cut your slots, push your magnetic snap through, place the washer, and push the sides down. These next couple of steps are one way to make it a crossover purse. I cut some ribbon that when folded over on itself is just a bit shorter than the width of the purse. I applied some heat and bond tape on the inside of the ribbon and ironed it in place making sure to leave about a finger's width of space for a loop at both ends. Next add a strip of heat and bond tape on the purse just under where your flap is. This way the ribbon will be concealed inside the bag. Iron the ribbon in place and add a jump ring to each end loop. To continue with making the actual purse, fold the bottom of your bag up and add heat and bond tape all along both sides of your bag. Cut some bias tape a little longer than the sides, and I'm using black because it matches better, and iron it into place, both front and back and both sides also. To clean up the extra hanging off the ends, just add some heat and bond tape and fold over the ends and iron it in place to get a nice clean finish. Finally, grab your chain, and I pre-cut mine to the length that I wanted it to be. And I like to grab two more jump rings and attach one to each end of the chain and to the jump ring that we already placed inside the bag on the little ribbon loop. Um, now, I totally lost the footage for this, but I show it again in the cheetah print purse so you guys can get to see it there. Next up, moving on to the envelope clutch, you can actually give this two different shapes. Pointy or... Um, not pointy. <laughs> I start by measuring and marking my lining fabric. I start with a width of 13 inches. For my length I measure 9 inches, another 9 inches, and 2 inches of flap space for a total of 20 inches in length. I found my center and I marked it with a dotted line and I made my flat top part 5 inches across which gave me diagonals of about 5.5 inches. For the pointy version, I again have a width of 13 inches, a length of 9 inches, another 9 inches, and 2 more inches for flap space, totaling 20 inches on length, and my diagonal sides are 8 inches each. The rest of the steps will be pretty much the same for both versions, except one I'm going to make a crossbody bag and the other is just going to be a clutch. Um, I've cut out my lining fabric and I placed it on top of the cover fabric. I measured half an inch bigger than the lining on all sides and cut my cover fabric to that measurement. Place your cover fabric front side down and center the lining fabric on top. Cut some heat and bond paper and iron it onto the flap section of the lining fabric. Peel back some of the paper but leave a chunk in the middle where your magnetic snap is going to go for reinforcement. So grab your magnetic snaps, place the washer in the center, and mark your slots. Make sure to move the cover fabric so you don't cut through it. Cut the slots only through the lining fabric. Um, push the snap through, add the washer, and push the little legs down, just like before. You should be pros at applying magnetic snaps after this. Then we're going to work with our cover fabric. Make sure it's front side down and apply some heat and bond paper to the entire thing. The next step is only if you want to make a crossbody bag. I measured half an inch down from the 2 inch mark of my length and an inch in from the sides of the lining fabric and marked two vertical lines. I've also cut some ribbon that when folded over is just about the size of the lining fabric. Again, move the cover out of the way and cut two small slits on the lines we just marked on the lining fabric. Just like in the last bag, we're using heat and bond tape to fold over the ribbon and adhere it, again leaving a loop on both ends. Apply some more heat and bond tape on one side of the ribbon. Leave space so that the tape doesn't cover the looped sections. Then place the ribbon tape side on the inside part of the lining. It's the part where the back of the magnetic snap is. And push the looped ends through the slits that we cut on both sides. Iron the ribbon in place, making sure the loops are sticking through the slits on both sides. Now once again, center the lining fabric onto the cover fabric and iron down only the top half of the purse. Next, fold the bottom half, fold down the flap, and just like before, mark the button knob on the top of the magnetic snap and neatly fold it down into place and press down. You should have a marking where you marked the button, or where it's going to meet for the other magnetic snap to go. 
place your washer over the dot and mark the sides. Remember we didn't connect the lining to the cover on the bottom half yet. So pull up the cover, add another patch of heat and bond paper on the inside of the cover fabric where the magnetic snap is going to be. Iron it on but do not remove that patch. Cut another little patch of heat and bond and place it on the lining fabric matching up with the patch we just added to the cover. Iron it on and that one we are going to peel off in about a second. I'm just cutting the slits that I marked on the cover fabric, not cutting into the lining. Push the snap through, add the washer, push the legs down once again. And there I'm finally peeling off the paper from the lining. Now you can finish ironing the bottom half of your purse. Next, take the extra half inch of fabric of the cover fabric that's along the bottom of your purse and fold it up onto the lining and iron it into place. Then apply some heat and bond tape along the bottom of the purse. Apply your bias tape on top and iron that into place as well. Since the bias tape is double folded, I'm opening up the fold and adding some more heat and bond tape inside just to seal everything shut. Cut a little indentation at your 2 inch line so that you can fold in and iron down the half inch extra cover fabric that's all around the flap of the purse just like we did with the bottom. Now flip your bag over so the outside faces up and iron on some heat and bond tape along both side edges. Basically you're ironing it along the half inch parts that we didn't just fold in. Then fold up your bag and it's supposed to be inside out so don't worry. And just iron your sides shut. Next I ran out of heat and bond tape so I'm actually cutting strips of the heat and bond sheet which was totally annoying and totally time consuming. But I know you guys are smarter and more prepared than I am so you probably won't run out of supplies. But anyway, I'm just gonna iron this on all around the opening of the purse. Peel it off and add your bias tape on top. Don't put your bias tape in pieces, <laughs> put it in a continuous strip. Um, start in the middle of the flap side of your bag and go all around. This is gonna make it really sturdy. Leave some extra so that it overlaps when it comes back to the middle. Add more heat and bond to the extra bits and fold it in just like we've been doing so that you can get a nice clean finish. Then we're going to do the same thing with both sides of the bag. Add heat and bond and then bias tape, leaving extra at both sides and adding more heat and bond to fold the extra bias tape in on itself. This is all going to help make your bag really sturdy and durable so you'll get lots of use out of it. If you're making a crossbody bag, grab two jump rings and attach one to each ribbon loop. You can attach your chain to the same jump ring if you want. I don't know why, I just like using a second one. But I grab a second jump ring and I attach the second one to the first and to the chain. Again, no idea why, that's just how I like to do it. Um, finally, or if you're not making a crossbody bag, all you have to do is push in the corners and pull your bag right side out and feel proud of your amazing work. So, I'm sorry if I sound like really congested and terrible in this video. I hope you guys understand me. I feel like my words just sounded really weird, but I am really, really congested. Either way, I hope you guys really like this video and I really hope you get to try it out. It saves ton of money. Um, you can pretty much customize the bag exactly to what you want or what you need for a particular outfit and it's really a lot of fun. So send me pictures if you do get to try it out. And that's it guys. I love you. Until the next video. Bye. Hi guys. <laughs> Hi guys. You like my bag? Yeah. I made this. Remember? Oh. Oh I like it. You like it? Mm -hmm. Thank you.